Okay, everybody, so it's another day of programming here. Um, we're going to get started with uh, a little bit of debugging on a mod I am developing. I've been kind of working for the last couple hours just trying to get this uh, polished up. So we're going to go work on it, and then once I'm done with it, we'll get back into our normal thing, which for now is going to be working on the nuclear blast, why I do all the fun back-end stuff off-camera. Um, anyways, I need a test area, so I'm going to get an anti-plant explosive here, and I'm going to wipe out the forest below me, you can see. That way, I don't have to worry about these plants getting away. In theory, that should have just worked. Um... <laughs> Wow. I, I think in yesterday's when we went to go work on the explosives, I think we may have just broken a little bit of everything. Because these, uh, these explosives should be much larger than they actually are. And yeah, everything just borked. Ah, oh, man. I, I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in what's going on with the explosives, is that we only wanted to change like two or three things. And we managed to pretty much break a little bit of everything yesterday. So one of the downsides of mod development is that you may have this perfect ideal of what you want to do. You may be set pretty forward with what you think you need to do. Then you change like three lines of code and you break everything. Uh, and I, uh, I never got around yesterday to actually making JUnit tests, so I have no idea what's wrong with these still. But uh, I guess we get to work on things. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go every time we visit a node, we need to stop said visiting node. Um, to be honest, the should path to it already does our thing for us. So if we go back up here, right underneath should have had two, we should add our thing to this. So add to already path to list. So that should take a lot of stuff out of the path node. So we're not repathing like 50,000 things. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move current count down here. So instead of doing a thousand loops is what we're doing, so we're doing a thousand of this loop. We're then going to turn around and only do a thousand block loops, because it should go about roughly the same speed. Okay, so let's fire this off again. And from previous tests, you guys would know that these actually have a really large radius to them, but something is terribly going wrong with the pathfinding, and I don't know what's wrong with it. Because if we go down here, we look through this, we can see that it's struggling to find blocks. It's finding maybe one block per thousand iterations, which doesn't make any sense because we shouldn't be reiterating across things. That means some, in some particular way, we're managing to find every single time a thousand new blocks that we haven't looped already. And we're managing to go outside of our maximum loop range which shouldn't happen. You know what, we're going to do what I was going to do yesterday. Even though I actually need to be debugging something in particular, I actually need to be working on uh, uh, some sentry guns here because my client has been talking to me, we've been going back and forth, and uh, the sentry guns broke again, which they're finicky by themselves. Seems like everything seemed to want to break today, or the last couple days. On top of this, my classes have just started, so I don't have the time to be debugging everything. Um, you know what? This loop right here is not very useful. So we're basically saying, okay, every every couple seconds while we're looping, we're, we're debugging information. Um, I'm going to do is at the end of the loop... I'm going to go, okay, if engine.running is dev. And then I'm going to put this down here. So that way, only at the end of the loop do we actually see our uh, 
our system here. So we get our list. So our list is telling us how many blocks. So we've updated the entire list, uh, how many up blocks we have in the stack, and how many we've pathed in total. And then on top of this, what I want to do is when we're putting stuff in the path locations, which we're doing, we're just tossing next node in there, which is a location object. Uh, what I want to do is I kind of want to stop using location. And I want to switch to using pause objects. Um, this will take a little longer to do certain things when it comes to writing code, but it should run a little faster. And on top of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own pause object down here. Uh, we're going to call this path pause, and it's going to implement our pause system. It implements i pause 3D. And we're just going to implement the methods here. I want to grab all the eyes as well. Because what we're going to actually do is we're going to store integers in this. So it'd be public final int x, y, z. And then we're going to go public path pauses. That's this way we're going to cut down our memory by about half. And then we're going to reduce precision errors. Because what I think is happening is a precision error. Because when you store a double or float, uh, it doesn't store perfectly. So when I go to put zero in there, instead of it being zero, it might be like literally this and then a one for whatever reason it decides to do that. It's usually some kind of compile problem or something like that. Uh, not a compile problem, but uh, it's some kind of runtime issue. And I haven't spent a huge amount of time researching it because it, it doesn't really matter too much with the stuff I usually do. But what I do is I go ahead and you just pass back, back each of the things in here. And like everything is mixed up right now. Uh, let me move this up here so it's next to its little guy. It's going to drive me nuts if this isn't below y. It's because these to be x, y, z, not z, x, y. But uh, that'll give us our path pause. Uh, we won't be able to do anything with the path pause. So we won't be able to just kind of grab location data quickly. But we will be able to, in theory, get stuff better. So we'll go path pause. Pause equals new path pause. And we want to get current node dot xi current node dot yi and then current node dot zi and then we got to add direction to here which direction is a pain in the, the butt to add it's uh, direction plus get off x set and stuff because we're using enum facing which is what is going to be used in the newer versions of minecraft so i'm switching to it uh there's a high likelihood i may just create my own version of it just so i don't have to worry about minecraft's changing on me every few days um and we're going to pretty much uh, have to change most of our pathing system. So, yeah. So path locations is going to change to path pause. Which is going to fumble a lot of our code. This would be new path pause. Uh, and this is going to be stack node. You know what, we're just going to create a thing down here real quick. Uh, public path pause. No, I didn't want that. I don't even know why you think I wanted that. And we're just going to do a thing right here. So this will be this.x equals pause3d.xi. And I'm just going to copy this three times and then change the letters. It's a little bit slower to do it this way, but oh well. Um, well, it's slower to do that copy pasting is what I meant to say, but yeah. So this will be, this will be pause. And this means on our stack, we're going to start storing path pauses for our stack. This should, we should see a really good decrease in memory usage by our objects here. Because when we're mapping blocks, we're, we don't really care about precision. We just want to know, are we at block A or B? 
we don't want to know are we at 0 0.03 inside the ball because it doesn't actually do anything for us. Okay. This is where stuff gets fun because I have to do, start doing things like this world dot get tilinity and I got to go path. I have to go. What, what is it? Uh, pause dot. Yeah, I might as well just do that. And right, now we might as well do this because we may come back through here and change this to uh, using uh, the pause 3D thing. That way we can do more elaborate code. Next node. Oh yeah, that's right. We uh, we renamed a few things. Uh, let me just rename this back to next node real quick. And we want change block. So this is where things kind of get a little stupid because I have to go through here and change a lot of code. Uh, this means backwards compatibility is pretty much shot. Uh, match case, replace all. And then I gotta go up here and fix the import because it's gonna try to do some stupid stuff with that. Uh, you know what we're actually gonna do with this real quick? Uh, I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna go toss this in the API. Because uh, I there are several other places where we actually do need a uh, a better pause object. What we're gonna call this is we're gonna call this uh, pause i or Call it block pause. I think, believe it or not, that's actually the name of the object uh, used by Minecraft. Um, and then I've got an idea of how to fix this a little bit. Problem is, it might involve updating coding lib real quick. Yeah, we, we got a lot of work cut out of us in the future. Um, what we're going to do real quick is just make sure we change this to block pop. Or I need to change path pause to block pause. And then replace all. And then we just got to import it. Import class. Okay, our center we want to be location because we actually do need that to be a location. And then same with this, this needs to be a location as well. Actually, we could do this by leaving this as block pause. We just got a Quite a few things we kind of need to do, but we're not doing. There's a precision error here, believe it or not. This would be new location. Grab this real quick. And then this is 0 0.5 added to each one of these. That could be a, a few issues we're having, is there's actually a rounding error that was c occurring right there. And then we're going to have to create a new block pause every time we want to do that right there. This will be plus direction. Oh, we're using forge direction here. That needs to be fixed. It's not too big of a deal, so I'm not going to actually mess with it right now. Um, why is this... Oh, 
There's an extra bracket there. Okay, almost got everything converted over. Uh, we gotta do a new node here, so we gotta do... You know what I kinda wanna do over here, because this is something we I do so often, is I wanna copy this. Actually, no, I'm gonna copy this whole statement here. It's so often we add direction to things, but when we wanna go add a direction, we almost always will create a new object, then add, and then just be like, oh, we, well, we just kind of wasted something. But why not, when you go to create a new direct object with a direction, you just do this real quick, because this is about the same amount of work, except you're not creating a junk object at the same time. And it's something that I need to go implement in a few dozen little places. This will be a new block pause, and then I could just do node, and then I can add put a direction at the end right there. And it results in the same behavior that I kind of want to have, except that, uh, we need one for E number facing. Create constructor. Except this needs to be I pause 3D. This is pretty much the same code, except instead of there being offset X, it's like get get uh, front offset X. There we go. And that works. So that should provide a little better support. Uh, we There's a couple things that are missing from here real quick that we're going to have to add. And I have to go find them real quick. Not including all the helper methods we need. I mean, look at all these sub and divide and stuff. What I'm going to probably do with these is I'm going to make an interface that's uh, that'll be applied. And it'll just include all of this stuff in, in it by default. That way I can quickly make objects. And what most of this, if you noticed, is pretty much we're just calling like vex.get this and we're calling the add method. And then the add method is just calling new pause with the data in it. Now, new pause is almost always going to result in a new pause location. So the only thing I have to implement per pause object would just be new pause if I did everything else correctly. Um, by the way, this is the stuff I want right here is hash code equals and compare. And I want to string as well. So these have to be implemented for the uh, compare method to work properly. So I need to go over here and I need to find this so I can get back to this class and then dump this stuff at the bottom. Um, that hash code should work. And then on here, we want to make sure we're doing this. So we want to say our precision is now not based on double, it's based on, uh, well, integers. And then this is going to be block pause. And the sad thing is, I'm pretty sure that Minecraft also names there as a block pause, so I'm going to probably have to rename this down the road. Uh, not too big of a deal, backwards compatibility, even though it's something I really want to maintain. You guys just will almost always uh, give me the same thing over and over again. Uh, and this needs to be integer dot. They're actually. I think I can just do this real quick. Um, as long as it stays the same, it shouldn't be a problem. So even if I get the hash code wrong, as long as it produces the same result every single time, it should be fine. Um, but, no, actually I can, I can do this. Yeah, that'll work. I'll have to JUnit test this to make sure that this does give me the same result every single time. Because what you want to do is if I pass in 000 and I do this for two separate things, the hash code should equal each other, the equal method should come out with the same result, and the compare method should work and give me the exact same value. Um, why is compare down here don't have a... Implements comparable. Actually, hold on. Comparable. And then block pause. Implement method. Should give me, yeah, should we just use the same code here? 
I believe this uh, compare method here is actually used for a comparator that allows you to compare with other things, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Actually, I should just go ahead and wrap it to that one, so go compare and then pass in that, and then just I, all I have to do is cast it to I possibly. Okay, so if I call this, yep, should come down there, cool. Even though the, the casting is not important, if you just left that in there, it would... Uh, actually, no, it wouldn't actually call that, surprisingly. I just realized it has a 2 behind it. I'm having another one of those slow mornings. Well, at least it's not as bad as it was the last few days. There's a reason why I stopped recording. It got to the point where my brain had stopped functioning bad enough that I couldn't program. Uh, also, what I need to do... I need to put a signature up at the top of this. Co copy the one that's up here. Oh, this one up here is not designed correctly either. Do any of these have? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, none of this stuff has like the proper. This one does. I'm just going to change the date on it. So this is 5 17 2017. Although we're going to be switching over to floats for a lot of our stuff. Here we go. And this should give us a better Pathfinder result if it didn't just break the Pathfinder horribly. And I'm going to hit the hit make project so I'm going to have to recode a couple of pa uh, blast codes. And when I mean a couple, I mean a lot. Uh, yeah, here's a test one. So let's just block pause. Yeah, just going to copy this real quick, and we're just going to worm our way through every single blast class until we get them all converted, and then we should be able to test. And I'm going to commit to this because this is going to result in some probably some of the best behavior we're going to get. Uh, only problem is there's a lot of stuff that needs to be implemented. Yeah. Uh huh. This one could be changed to if direction doesn't equal uh, enum facing dot up. Uh, we're going to need is error block. Create, yeah, we'll just create getter. Um, how this works is we you do a git block here, so git block, and of course this is going to have to pass in world, because we don't have a world for this. We may make a version that does have a world attached to it, but right now we're not going to do that. Uh, anyways, return null, and then we want to go, okay, if world doesn't equal null, and yeah, we'll just do it that way. I'm not going to do the chunk loading thing right now, but uh, we'll do it later. So we got that, and then what we're going to do is go block, block equals get block, and then you pass in world. And then we want to go if block doesn't equal null, because it can equal null. Also, we want to put a note here. To do check. So we return false, and then return block dot is error world x i y i z i. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll put these into a prefab method here later. I'll probably recode all of the pause objects here and make sure they're all tested out properly.
Okay, so this needs to be world, and then this is sub zero one zero, and then yeah, this just needs to be world, and then that. There we go. That converts the firebomb. Yeah, I got oh, yeah, I got all the methods in the firebomb. So we're down two blasts now. A lot more to go. It's going to be worth it though because we're going to get a much more stable run out of this and we we'll, should ignore all the precision problems we're having. Only problem is I need to go re-edit the world edit class. It needs to actually extend uh, our, our pause location. Uh, there's a lot of other things I need to do as well. Um, to be honest, block position I think should include world. Because that's what we're kind of using it for, is with a world location on top of it. Mm. We'll make another one called block world pause here later. Uh, this is just going to be this, so we'll I'll go ahead and implement uh, our hardness check here. This is also going to require a world to be passed into it. And this will pretty much operate the same as up here. Um, yeah, we'll copy and paste this. So we'll grab this, put this down here. Uh, we want to return negative one if we don't have anything, basically saying we're unbreakable. Uh, but that should only happen if the chunk's unloaded. World xi, yi, zi. Now what else do you want? No, that's it. Why are you complaining? No, because you're, you're a float value. And then you just pass world in here. And I'm going to copy this again because that's what we're pretty much doing is just going through and copying and pasting that. Sad knocks another blast out. Doesn't take too long to change through this. Uh, there's Supposedly there's some tools I could be using right now to do this automatically for me. There are easy buttons. But uh, we're just going to go through and do it the hard way real quick because eh, it's a it's good practice. I'll we'll go ahead and just put world world on this. We'll come back to that in a second. So this needs to have world. Uh, that needs to have world. I'm about to say the word Disney World, just but with that retarded accent that you can do. Um, and this is going to be if direction doesn't equal up. So if direction doesn't equal enum. You know, I'm facing up or not south. Basically, the, what we're working on is a couple of the flash fire explosions are not allowed to pathfind up. They're purely down based explosions. And this needs to be new location world and then location and then dot add. Cool. Well, that knocks another one out. And then, of course, we need to code this up real quick. This is literally the same thing. Once you get this prefab done, you're pretty much just copying and pasting this over and over again and giving the same result. So block dot is replaceable and then world x i y i z i. And then you return false if you don't have a block so you can't replace it. And then of course we want to copy our block pause again. Close that, close that. Uh, onward to the next one. This one isn't as bad as the last one. Um, this one actually needs to be changed to location dot is air block. Oh, this is a nuke we're working on. I just realized that too. And then we need to do get resistance here. Create method get resistance and block pause. We'll come back to this in a second. And then put world here. Okay, so that takes care of the nuke. A lot of these other explosions should go pretty quickly because a lot of them are just kind of block checks after a while. Like, is it air? Can I use it? Can I do things with it? Does X work on Y type of thing? Yeah, what are we in right now? We're in anti-plant life. 
Yeah, this one's pretty much if it's a planet dies. Uh, this just needs to be. I don't know why we even called location on that one. We're gonna go ahead and add an add method to this so I can just make my life a little easier here. And this is going to be new block pause. Uh, this dot x plus x, this dot y plus y, and then this dot z plus. Cool. Done with that one. Knocks another one out. About halfway there. Import class. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the test classes. We got a couple of test classes for the blast because they're they're pretty straightforward. They're just there to make sure that some of the base methods actually work properly. I'm not even sure what I just was editing. Um, I think this is literally a world dot can can block see sky method. Actually, these really do need to be that. There we go. That can be changed to the world. I just needs world there. Yeah, how the uh, or up pull works basically is it gets it figures out what the top block is and it just pulls the block to the top of the world pretty much. It's got a few different nuances of how it actually accomplishes set goal, but it's pretty simplistic. Uh, then the micro quake just kind of is a randomizer. Okay, is there not a method for this? Yay. Um, okay, so what we have to do here is change this whole method set here. So this would be set, and we'll do that. I actually need to work on the microquake because it was inspired by uh, one of Reika's machines and there's a few people who have asked me to make it because it wasn't something I originally wanted to actually put into the mod. Somebody's like, hey, Reika's got this quake thing, you should uh, make a missile that does it. I'm like, oh, you know, that's not a bad idea. So needless to say, I, I made it. It's just not implemented yet. It does work though. There's a lot of things that need to be edited as you can see. There's a huge to-do list here. There's almost always a to-do list when it comes to my work. Okay, and we're good there. So that knocks another one out of the list. By the way, if you can add this to my list of reasons why I haven't updated the newer version of Minecraft yet, uh, I do one of these rewrites almost every couple weeks. Where I have to go through and pretty much redo something completely. Put a there. Method. Do this again. This will be world dot get block. So we actually don't even need this. We just need to make sure the world's not null. So again, we need to do that here too. The reason why we check null null on world is because you could have the world go null on you random sometimes. It's not actually random, there is a predictable reason why it happens, but it's, needless to say, it's happened enough that I just take the cautious side because it adds like one or two nanoseconds to the runtime. If anybody ever argues the point, it's like, oh, but you're wasting CPU cycles. It's like, maybe, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, distance check. I guess I can create a method for this real quick. Uh, 
Um, I do this real quick. Pause real quick and go copy its distance method. It doesn't have a distance method in it. Okay, so pause, pause equals new pause, pause dot distance. We're gonna cheat this real quick so I can just be done with this. Uh, we're gonna go new pause this dot distance x y z. And then we're going to actually add 0 0.5 to this, that way it's centered. And we'll go to do replace with actual code. Because this is, we're wasting CPU cycles because we're creating two junk objects every time we call distance, which is already pretty bad because distance checks are pretty bad on the CPUs that is. But I don't have time to sit here and kind of work magic to get this stuff to work. I just kind of need the function. Not including this fact, I think I could smell my soup burning out on the stove. Yeah, pro tip, if you're ever coding, um, don't cook at the same time. Because you can get into the zone and, well, your food's going to be burnt. Oh, we got 36 minutes right now? Cool. Oh, I think I hear somebody stirring my food for me. Yay! Don't have to worry about it burning. Uh, this is another one of those we can just say if uh, enum, enum facing... Dot up does not equal direction. The reason, by the way, that you see a lot of these checks here is that enum facing was added here only a few days ago. Uh, it was not originally in here. What it, how, what was expected when I designed the code is that you would just subtract these two from each other to figure out what your facing direction was. And then I started running into a few methods where, you know what, I, I need enum facing in enough of a quantity that I might as well pass it in because a lot of the pathfinders know what direction they're moving in. So it's like, if we know where we're going, we might as well pop the direction in there. Anyways, more conversions here. If you guys think this is bad, by the way, I'll uh, I'll record when I go to update to uh, 1.8 here down the road, and you'll see me do nothing about this for two weeks straight, pretty much. Except it'll be with Minecraft code and not my own. Well, I mean, it'll be with my own, but it'll be with everything that's calling Minecraft code. I'm actually going to toss this into... Yeah, I guess I'm going to toss it in there. And then we want to do set and then blocks dot air. Uh, set does have a slightly different behavior than some of these do, just as a note. Um, so this may change the behavior of the blast ever so slightly, but it's not enough to make a difference. Uh, the difference is that this will tell what block to set. This one not only sets the block, but then tells it to remember what block it set and everything else. Uh, there is some nuances to this. Needs to be fire. I almost messed that up. What are we on? We're on microwave blast. Okay. This is one of the blasts that I need to actually spend some time working on. One of these days we'll go through and we'll just like take two days out of the week per blast and just go through and just absolutely polish them up, make them work well. Because there's there's things like this that uh, are problematic. This has trouble with water, where it'll delete the water, but because how long the Pathfinder takes to run, which we are fixing the Pathfinder right now, so it may solve the issue. But it's enough of an issue that uh, it needs to be fixed some more after we are done fixing this. Okay, we're going to need a... Yeah, I'm just going to start adding helper after helper method here. And then I'll come through here later when uh, I'm on break or something and just redo the, all of this. That's going to go if uh, world doesn't equal null. And then return world.getTileID. I have a feeling I'm going to have to come back through here and like double check a lot of this code. It all looks good, but I've always had that issue when I mess with my pause stuff that uh, you get problems. Uh, what is center? Center is a vector of some kind, so we're going to need to make a new distance check. Uh, what we're going to do for this one is just, just going to return distance, and then we're going to go center.x 
center.y and then center.c. And then this is, of course, a double on distance. Oh, well, that has only uh, one input on it. Yeah, we're in the EMP right now, which is not exactly designed to be flexible. It's got like a one way it wants to work type of mode. Uh, I definitely need to come through here because there's some issues with the EMP function because even though it, it calls the universal energy system, a lot of people have been telling me that the EMP is not draining the tiles and it has a lot to do with the fact that thermal expansion is, I wouldn't say finicky, it's restrictive. It, it wants you to do things its way and it doesn't really want to do anything. And I've already been told by King Lemming that he doesn't really care for EMPs to work on his tiles. Uh, so he told me that and I'm like, eh, that's kind of sad because I have to then go the hard way to EMP his tiles and... I hope I don't run into a situation where he decides to go out of his way to prevent me from doing what I'm doing. Because I have respect for him, but I want to make my stuff work. And I don't really care about his lore bullshit that says I'm not supposed to EMP his stuff. Because after all, I'm here to cater the users and not to cater him. That being said, in our last conversation, he kind of mocked me because I didn't know how to act, how MP MPs actually worked. And I'm like, I have a general understanding from when I used to study electrical engineering, but it's been years, and it's expecting me to still remember that stuff after a couple years is kind of like, meh. Uh, what are we missing in here? Oh, there we go. It's just, I, I hate the fact that I can't tell the difference between some of these colors. Luckily, because we've got enough of these prefabs set up, we all we have to do is do things like just put world in here. I'm probably going to come through here and also re-engineer the blast, because I kind of want to separate this code from the blast code a little bit. That way... I can turn around and then make a laser gun that's an anti-plant and it will call the same method chain. That way I don't have to recode everything here later. That's, that's something way in the future. That's for the Armory mod where we're going to be implementing a lot of things. Uh, here pretty soon we're going to be adding some new guns to the mod. Um, I have my modeler, Grogger, who's also the writer for the game I'm working on. Uh, he wants to take some of the guns from the game we're working on. He wants to put them in Minecraft for YOLO reasons. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. So we're going to make a, uh, a mod, which is going to be named the same as the game. Um, and or it's going to be named after the game. I don't know if we're going to use the same name. And it'll add really cool things. Like one of the things we're going to be adding is going to be uh, a gun that doesn't lose velocity as it gets over distance. It gains velocity. It's a Talcon weapon. Uh, he's explained it to me a few times. I don't fully understand the physics behind it. Um, we missed something in this class because it's giving me a red line at the top. Oh well, I'll hit recompile in a second. It'll tell me. And... Oh, blast corruption. Okay. This one's pretty easy. Uh, this one was location, though. Uh, I guess I'll just make a location here. I mean, adding, creating these little dead objects isn't too big of a deal. It doesn't really waste too much time with the CPU. Uh, I'm going to hit rebuild project, so it rebuilds the entire workspace. It'll take a second to do this. Close that real quick. By the way, we fixed a few issues in Volts Engine that apparently have existed, so for those of you that have been downloading the alpha version and having render crashes, uh, I, it was determined where the cause was. Um, one of the things we were we were using reflection to grab a list of all the tiles in the game and then find which ones uh, had the ID name we needed. Uh, so we were essentially mapping tiles by name, and the name is used to grab the render data for our tiles. So a lot of the tiles were failing to render and were causing some weird bugs, and it should have solved a few issues. Although not all of the issues are solved, like some of these guys are having uh, RAM crashes. I'm not certain those are being caused by Volt Session. I haven't rolled it out yet, but nothing is pointing towards it, and those who have had the problem have not exactly debugged properly. So we 
are not exactly certain if the problem has gone away. Uh, it still has a red line on it. Yeah, right there it is. Hit close, actually, yeah, I'll hit close all. And then I'll reopen simple pass. This is where it would have been useful if I went through and I actually had used an interface for a lot of these because we were just passing in a straight location, but if I passed an I world position, it would have been fine. <laughs> By the way, it still says there's an error there. It's not applicable for arguments. I'm going to hit build and make project again. IntelliJ is finicky. I need to go through and I need to just kind of fine tune it and uh, there are some plugins and stuff I can install that will mitigate these problems. For those who don't know what mit mit the word mitigate means, it means to kind of uh, remove some of the possibility that the problem is going to be there. It's not a perfect definition, you guys can Google that, but you're not getting rid of the problem, but you're reducing the chance it will happen. And that's kind of the most important thing when it comes to software, because you never get rid of problems. They're always going to be there. You're always going to have a likelihood that you're going to crash, you're going to null point, you're going to do something, because you're working on through a Java virtual machine, which then is running on unknown hardware. So you could have literally anything as long as it runs Java Virtual Machine, my stuff will run. Which means you could be like on an alien spaceship. <laughs> yeah, which basically means that there's a high likelihood just because of your different hardware compatibilities that things will crash in very weird ways. I just had an issue where I was talking to my client uh, and he was going like, hey, this is crashing, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I look at the error, the error has nothing to do with my mods, and we find out it has to do with his graphic settings. Uh, his graphic settings in Minecraft were set in such a way that Minecraft was having problems figuring out how many chunks to render and was going beyond its ability to render, and thus was crashing in the process. And it's a really simple issue that something set his render distance too high and broke the game. Luckily, it was pretty easy for me to figure out, though. I had to go look at the code and go, okay, this code and everything it's calling is just figuring out what chunks to render and what to render in those chunks. It was trying to grab the tile entities and it needs to render. Uh, and, but where it was crashing, because it was going out of index, I couldn't find a list of entities or tiles, because if there was a list of entities or tiles, then it would have been my fault at some level, because I could have been putting something in those lists that was bad. But it was indexed out of bounds, which told me even that possibility was not there. Uh, anyways, we should be able to test our blast here in a second. Hopefully, crossing our fingers, we didn't break it even more. If we did, I'm probably just going to, between this episode and the next one, just kind of work on things. Which, speaking of episodes too, uh, I finally got video editing software, so uh, here in, I don't know when, I'll start editing my uh, videos more and more. Oh, we're getting a... Uh... Well, it's working. Something tells me unknowingly uh, the distance we were getting out of the anti-plant was uh, not the distance. Uh, we're still getting that problem where we're only pathing like... Oh, we're going. We only go 104 nodes pathed, 60 in the stack, zero entries added. I don't get what's going on wrong with, wrong with this. I should path to. Okay, we're gonna have to do something stupid here, and I apologize for this, but uh, I need to go through this whole list. Okay. So here's our block pause location. Stack is empty. We add our location to the stack. Offer to the stack, add to the path locations. Did it just exit before we were done? No, it didn't. Okay, it's just being weird. Okay, so we're grabbing all of our blocks. Should path two, cool, added. Count goes up by one. Should path two, puts it on the stack does its thing. I need to break this down into another method here in a second. Okay, so we're going through each of our directions. That's cool. Oh, 
Oh, we're exiting the loop even quicker now because we, we did it this way. Okay, I see what I messed up. Um, yeah, let's put it back here. Because this way we're basically getting a six times increase on the number of nodes we're pathing. Okay, so we'll remove this, hit play. I think we got a little faster response out of that. And if we go down to the debug console, it's still only pathing one block. Hundred and twenty five nodes path, sixty six in stack. You see each one of these layers we're not really gaining blocks we're pathing. Something's weird. Because we got sixty six in stack yet we're not we're maintaining sixty six in stack each time. Uh something's not being set correctly. So current count is resetting each time, so we it's that's not gonna be our problem. That's not problematic. That's not a problem. My dog just woke up from her nap and is going to whine at me. Means I need to go take her outside here in a bit. Uh, it's very strange. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line here, and what we're going to do is we're going to run this. And we're going to see what it's going to do each and every single tick. Um, so we've only found two blocks. Our stack is six. So we've only managed to pass six blocks this iteration, which makes sense. There's only six blocks to, the, to path our very first run. Path locations is seven. Okay. Uh, we want to look at the debugger real quick. And we want to look at what our data is for this real quick. Uh, our size is 26 blocks, so we should be getting a 26 either radius or diameter. I actually no longer know which it is. Okay, so now we have 12. We still have only found three blocks that we can do anything to. And our stack size is 10. Uh, list size is 0, which means we didn't find anything. Stack is 14, size is 17. So we've only managed to pass 17 blocks in three iterations. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No, actually that does. Because we're, we're shooting at the ground. So our first loop should come up with six blocks. Our second loop should do one, two, three, four. Taz, can you please know? Okay, my dog's going to be unreal at this. So we're going to end this video here, and uh, the next video will continue on this, and hopefully I'm going to build up some J units the next, because uh, that's, that's the only thing I can think of we can fix at this point. Because there's clearly something wrong with how the Pathfinder is behaving, but I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with it.